If you look at the front of his face, it certainly doesn't look normal. It's very distorted. You may just be able to see the ends of the nose there. The legend of King Tutankhamun is one of power, mystery, and untold riches. Yet the story we thought we knew was only half told. For years, experts wondered about his fragile health and untimely demise, theories swirling like desert sands. Now, groundbreaking scientific detective work has cracked open the ultimate cold case. By meticulously analyzing the ancient DNA of the Golden Pharaoh, researchers unearthed a revelation that changes everything. It's a shocking, almost unbelievable family secret that reveals the true, complex reality behind Egypt's most enigmatic ruler. The truth is far stranger than any fiction. Pharaoh's Genetic Blueprint For thousands of years, the mystery surrounding King Tutankhamun, the young pharaoh whose tomb lay undisturbed for so long, has captivated historians and enthusiasts alike. His golden burial mask is perhaps the most iconic symbol of ancient Egypt, drawing millions to gaze upon its splendor. But beneath that iconic visage, beneath the layers of linen and centuries of dust, lay a truth far more astonishing than any treasure. You see, the thing nobody tells you is that the greatest secret of all was embedded within his very bones, waiting for the dawn of modern science to bring it to light. Scientists have now, with incredible precision, decoded the DNA ancestry of King Tut. And what they revealed was a shocking family secret that rewrites fundamental aspects of his life and the 18th dynasty. The story begins not in the sands of Egypt, but in the sterile, high-tech labs where geneticists painstakingly work to extract and analyze ancient biological material. For years, the mummified remains of King Tut and several other royal mummies were subjects of intense speculation. Who were his parents? What caused his premature demise at just 19 years old? His fragile health was evident from his mummy. A club foot, a cleft palate, and a weakened immune system were all observed. Many people were crazy about figuring out these puzzles, but the technology just wasn't there. Then, a monumental project began. An ambitious endeavor to use DNA analysis, a technique barely conceivable decades ago, to unlock the genetic blueprint of these ancient rulers. The challenge was immense. Ancient DNA is notoriously difficult to work with, often degraded and contaminated after millennia. However, breakthroughs in extraction and sequencing methods offered a glimmer of hope. The team, led by Egypt's top archaeologists and geneticists, meticulously collected tiny samples from King Tut's mummy, as well as from ten other royal mummies believed to be closely related to him. These samples, no bigger than a grain of rice, held the key to unlocking an untold narrative. The process was delicate, each step crucial to avoid contamination. Imagine trying to piece together a puzzle with thousands of missing and damaged pieces, all while wearing gloves and working in a sterile environment. That's the scale of the task. They focused on specific genetic markers, tiny sequences that act like historical breadcrumbs, leading them through generations of royal lineage. The initial findings were groundbreaking enough just to prove that viable DNA could indeed be extracted from mummies this old, this alone was a wow factor, expanding the possibilities for understanding ancient populations across the globe. But the real shocker wasn't just that they could extract the DNA, it was what the DNA said. The data, when compiled and analyzed, painted a clear, undeniable picture of King Tut's immediate family. It confirmed what some historians had long suspected, but could never prove. Akhenaten, the revolutionary pharaoh who introduced a monotheistic worship of the sun god Aten, was indeed Tutankhamun's father. This was significant, but the truly jaw-dropping revelation lay with his mother. The DNA evidence pointed to a mummy known as the Younger Lady, found in Tomb K-535. But here's the astounding, almost unbelievable detail. The Younger Lady was not just a royal consort or a distant relative. She was the full sister of Akhenaten. To put it mildly, King Tut was the product of a brother and a sister. This finding wasn't merely a historical footnote. It unveiled a deeply ingrained practice within the 18th dynasty, a family secret that had profound implications. This practice of pharaohs marrying their full sisters was, shockingly, a tradition of divine kingship, meant to keep the royal bloodline pure. 
They believed that only those with the purest, most direct divine lineage could rule. However, from a genetic standpoint, this had devastating consequences. Intermarriage like this significantly increases the risk of passing on recessive genes, leading to genetic abnormalities and health problems. And this you see directly addressed the persistent questions about King Tut's frail health and numerous physical ailments. His clubfoot, requiring a cane to walk, his malformed spine, and the numerous other health issues recorded in his mummy now had a clear genetic explanation. The DNA revealed a family tree that was less of a branching oak and more of a tangled, interconnected vine, where the branches circled back on themselves, generation after generation. This isn't just history, it's a testament to how genetic choices, made thousands of years ago, echoed through the life of a king. The next part of the story will reveal just how widespread this practice truly was. A twisted family tree. The revelation of King Tut's parentage, born of a brother and sister, threw a spotlight on the ancient Egyptian royal family in a way no historical text ever could. But this wasn't an isolated incident or a one-off choice by Akhenaten. Instead, the DNA evidence, when cross-referenced with other royal mummies, painted a picture of a consistent, albeit genetically risky, practice throughout generations of the 18th dynasty. This is why this is huge. It implies that the very structure of royal succession and divine legitimacy was built upon a foundation that, while culturally significant, carried a heavy biological cost. The genetic analysis extended beyond Tutankhamun, reaching back to his grandparents. DNA from the mummy of Amenhotep III, identified as King Tut's paternal grandfather, and Queen Tia, his paternal grandmother, further solidified the family tree. These findings were crucial for validating the genetic links and confirming the identities of other unidentified royal mummies. Imagine unraveling a complex family tapestry where many names and faces are unknown, and then suddenly, modern science gives you undeniable proof of who is connected to whom. The identification of Queen Taya was particularly impactful. Her well-preserved mummy had long been a source of fascination. Now, her place as matriarch of this intricate lineage was confirmed, adding another layer of authenticity to the scientific detective work. The core motivation behind this incestuous practice was deeply rooted in ancient Egyptian religious beliefs. Pharaohs were not just rulers. They were considered divine beings, direct descendants of the gods. To marry outside the immediate royal family was seen as diluting this sacred bloodline, compromising their divine right to rule. It was believed that the gods themselves married their siblings, and thus, pharaohs mirrored this divine pattern. This cultural imperative, while understandable within their worldview, created a biological dilemma that manifested most starkly in King Tut's own health. The thing nobody tells you is that this perceived purity came at an incredibly high price for the individuals involved. King Tut's numerous health issues, ranging from bone deformities to a compromised immune system, are now widely understood as direct consequences of this genetic bottleneck. For centuries, tomb robbers and the ravages of time obscured these intricate relationships. Hieroglyphs and ancient texts offered clues, but often in symbolic language open to interpretation. The DNA, however, speaks a universal language, cutting through thousands of years of ambiguity. The identification of King Tut's great-grandparents, Yuya and Thuya, further extended the genetic map. These were high-ranking nobles, not pharaohs themselves, yet their DNA provided essential markers to trace the royal line. This intricate web of relationships, validated by genetic science, transformed mere hypotheses into confirmed facts. What many overlooked is the sheer audacity of this scientific undertaking to extract and analyze genetic material that has been dormant for so long and use it to conclusively answer questions that have baffled historians for ages. It's a testament to how far genetic science has come. The discovery also sheds new light on the political landscape of the time. The shift by Akhenaten to a monotheistic religion centered on Aten, away from the traditional pantheon of gods, was a radical departure. His reign was tumultuous, and his reforms were largely overturned after his passing. King Tut, inheriting this complex legacy,
had to navigate a return to traditional religious practices. Understanding his direct familial ties, especially to a pharaoh as controversial as Akhenaten, helps us grasp the immense pressures and expectations placed upon the young ruler. The genetic revelation isn't just a personal story about Tutankhamun, it's a window into the power dynamics and religious ideologies that defined an entire empire. But how did these health issues truly impact Tut's life? A life marked by genetics. With the shocking family secret of King Tut's parentage confirmed, the offspring of full siblings, a new understanding of his chronic health problems emerged. His frail constitution and numerous physical ailments, long subjects of historical debate, now have a compelling genetic explanation. This is why this is huge. It shifts our perspective from purely external factors like accidents or assassination theories to an internal biological struggle inherent in his very being. The thing nobody tells you is that the burden of divine lineage was also a physical one. Detailed examinations of King Tut's mummy have provided a wealth of medical information over the decades. X-rays and CT scans, first performed in the 1960s, and later with more advanced technology in 2005, painted a grim picture of a young man plagued by multiple health issues. He suffered from Kohler's disease, a rare bone disorder affecting the feet, which likely caused his severe club foot. This explains why over 130 walking canes were found in his tomb. He was highly reliant on them to move around. Imagine being the most powerful person in the land, yet unable to walk comfortably without assistance. This detail alone makes his story so much more relatable and tragic. Beyond his foot problems, the CT scans also revealed a curved spine, another possible sign of congenital deformities. He also likely suffered from malaria, evidenced by DNA traces of the malaria parasite found in his tissues. While malaria was rampant in ancient Egypt and could affect anyone, a compromised immune system, a potential consequence of extensive inbreeding, would have made him particularly vulnerable. It's like a domino effect. One genetic weakness could open the door to other illnesses. Many people are crazy about understanding how he passed away, and these findings provide crucial pieces to that puzzle. While a broken leg, possibly sustained just before his passing, may have been the final straw, it was the underlying genetic vulnerabilities that truly made him a ticking clock. The DNA analysis not only confirmed his parents, but also indicated his genetic predisposition to these issues. When two closely related individuals reproduce, the chances of their offspring inheriting two copies of a harmful recessive gene, one from each parent, dramatically increase. This is precisely what appears to have happened with King Tut. While ancient Egyptians couldn't have understood genetics, they were unwittingly stacking the deck against their own royal offspring in their pursuit of divine purity. This pattern of health issues likely extended to other members of the royal family who also engaged in such close relationships, though King Tut's case is the most thoroughly documented due to the preservation of his mummy. This understanding transforms King Tut from a distant golden icon into a young man who faced significant physical challenges throughout his short life. His reign, though historically important for restoring the traditional religion after Akhenaten's reforms, was also marked by personal hardship. He was, to put it mildly, a living testament to the consequences of a unique cultural belief system. His reliance on his canes and his seemingly constant struggle with illness make his accomplishments, brief as they were, all the more remarkable. But what does this genetic revelation mean for our broader understanding of ancient history? The decoding of King Tut's DNA and the revelation of his shocking family secret are far more than just fascinating tidbits of ancient history. They represent a fundamental shift in how we approach archaeology and historical research, providing an unprecedented genetic lens through which to view the past. This is why this is huge. It proves that science can fill in the gaps where written records are scarce, ambiguous, or even intentionally misleading. For centuries, our understanding of ancient Egyptian royalty was built upon hieroglyphs, tomb paintings, and the interpretations of classical historians. While invaluable, these sources often presented an idealized or politically motivated version of events. The thing nobody tells you is that these ancient narratives rarely, if ever, delved into the complex biological realities that shaped the lives of pharaohs. Genetic analysis cuts through this, offering objective, undeniable data about familial relationships, origins, 
and even predispositions to disease. It allows us to humanize figures like King Tut, moving beyond the static images and bringing their physical struggles into sharp relief. The implications extend far beyond King Tut himself. This success story paves the way for similar DNA studies on other ancient populations, promising to unlock secrets about migration patterns, disease susceptibility in different eras, and the genetic makeup of lost civilizations. Imagine being able to trace the movements of entire peoples, or understand why certain diseases were prevalent in specific regions, all through the silent testimony of ancient DNA. This is a wow factor in itself, expanding the very frontiers of historical inquiry. The technology continues to advance rapidly, making it possible to work with even smaller and more degraded samples, pushing the boundaries of what was once thought impossible. The tale of King Tut's DNA reveals a shocking family secret, fundamentally altering his story. What other royal truths remain buried, waiting for science to speak? Like and subscribe for more mind-blowing discoveries.